morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, breakthrough trainings. Um, we're excited to have Mary Pierce. She's with Older Public Home Protection with us today. And um, I'm not going to do your bio justice because I know you've been affiliated in the real estate industry for a while, but in several different capacities. And that so is true. if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that, that would be awesome. I will do that. My capacities. So um, I've been in the real estate industry for, okay, over 25 years, but I've Start done everything shoot. from construction, rehabs, remodels, fix and flips, that whole gamut. I was an appraiser for many years, um, real estate agent, residential and commercial. Commercial, commercial, <laughs> that's a tough game. Um, and now a home warranty rep. So kind of got a nice big broad spectrum. I understand what y'all are going through. Um, so that's, that's it. I've been with Old Republic now for four years. So, and today we're going through all of the fun, wonderful stuff inside of our fabulous plan. <laughs> So, and then I'll also show you some of the different marketing materials we have, such as door hangers, our toolbox, which is super awesome. And then sign writers, things like that, that you can get for your listings. Okay. Everybody have their brochure. Yes, yes. Charlotte, will you be joining us or should I just go? Okay. All right. I'm going to give you a kind of a brief overview of how this is laid out because it can be a little tricky. So the, the back cover, first of all, is just the quick checklist of everything, <laughs> of everything we have um, for quick reference so that you can tell. And do you see where the first line here, this is for seller's coverage. That is when you have a listing, um, it's our basic standard plan. It is our only plan where AC and heat is an option. So I'll come back and explain how the seller's coverage works uh, later on. So the next three rows are for buyers, for your clients when they're buying the home, the standard, the ultimate, and the platinum. And you can see how they kind of build on each other. The standard is that, and then it adds a little bit more, and then it adds a little bit more. So. And it, the same applies on the inside of the brochure. So it starts by explaining, up here at the top, you'll see where it says standard coverage. So this now spells out everything you saw on the back checklist. It has the covered, not covered. It has everything in there, any plan limits, if any. And then as you go over to this side, it now shows what the ultimate plan adds on to the standard plan. And then it shows what the platinum adds on to the standard. Okay, does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of the really neat things about our plan, it's not just a brochure. It's the covered, not covered. It's the same exact small print, fine print, everything you're gonna find in the actual policy. And on the very last page where the order form is, it also has a declination of coverage. This can be real helpful in situations where um, you've, you've suggested to your buyer that you would recommend a home warranty. And if they say no, they don't want one, you can have them sign that and keep it in the file just in case later on after they close, they come back to you and say, why didn't you tell me about a home warranty? So then you can say, I, I did stands up in court too. Okay, um, let's see. So let's start right with our standard plan. Um, our, we have very few limits on anything. And I'm gonna go right to that box. These are the blue boxes that you see within the plan. Mm -hmm. And then on the back side here. A lot of plans, other companies out there on AC, for example, we'll have age exclusion, rust exclusion. If you're going, if, if we, if they need to replace an AC unit, they may prorate the AC unit 
by age and only give you that dollar amount towards a new unit, we don't do that. We have no age exclusion, no rust exclusion. Um, we cover multiple units at no extra charge. So let's say you have a two-story home that has two AC units. They're both included. Or even if you have four units. So that's a really good thing to know. A lot of the other companies will add an extra charge if you have more than one unit. Is there a cap on the number of units? No. Because I was looking at a house and it was like one of the crazy square footage, like 7,000 square feet. And it had like eight air conditioning units. Great question. You know? This plan is for up to 5,000 square feet. Okay. I'm sorry, these prices are up to 5,000 square feet. So if you're 5,000 and above, then you call in for a quote and then okay. you get, yeah. Because we do realize those larger than 5,000 square feet houses would have a, a lot more units and more kitchens and more everything usually. Yeah. So great, great question though. Um, we also, like Freon for example, is anywhere from 50 to $125 a pound. Some companies will cover $10 a pound of that. Some put a cap at whatever dollar amount. We have zero, zero caps on that. We cover 100% if we have to charge it, if we have to evacuate the Freon and dispose of it. Hmm. And that's really, really important to know in the summer, especially because what is the most important appliance in your buyer's homes? The AC unit, yes. And I'm gonna to touch a little bit on that as well because as you guys all know, home inspector does not inspect the AC unit. Yes, he does the split, the split test. However, if there's a leak in that coil, and let's just say the seller just had their AC unit uh, you know, they had their tune-up done, it was a little low on Freon, so they added Freon. And now your home inspector comes for the buyer and passes the split test just fine, doesn't it? Um, but now, 30 days later, the seller's moving out, doors are wide open, that AC unit's running as hard as it can to try and keep up. Your buyers a couple days later are moving in and that the doors are open, the AC unit's trying to keep up. And suddenly the, the buyers are moved in and the AC unit won't work. So you call us and we go out there and we say, there's a hole in the coil. Should that be covered? Should have passed inspection, technically. It was never inspected. Oh. And that's the thing we're having a lot of trouble with is, is on the front of your purchase agreement, on the buyer's checklist, it says in there to have your major mechanicals inspected by. It's, it's a, it's Old Republic looking at a licensed inspector that's being qualified to, or does it have to be an AC person? Um, I believe it's a certified AC technician that would do a leak pressure test to make sure there's no holes in the coil. And just like we do with the termites, when uh, the inspector goes out, we have a termite inspector come along. You can have an AC inspector come along as well and just do the pressure leak test on it to make sure there's no holes in that coil. Because no matter how great of a job you did finding this house for the buyer and they love the house, if they move in and that AC doesn't work right away, they're, they're going to be upset. Mm -hmm. Even if we did fix it, they're still going to be without AC for three, four days. When, when uh, we're talking... And for like sellers, it's 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 always tough, you know, when you're representing a, a, an owner, right? Because um, they talk about getting stuff completed, right? And it's always one of those things: contractor, handyman, competent professional, you know. So when it comes to AC stuff, it always always has to be an HVAC person, right? No matter what, there's no leeway in that realm of any repairs whatsoever, right? I would say that's pretty accurate, yes. I mean, if, if you had, you know, let's say maybe an ex-AC technician that had the proper equipment to do a pressure leak test on the unit, we're, we're not going to require the proof from you, 
but we will ask for it if it helps your case to prove that it was inspected and the leak test was done. So if anybody put free on though, it, would, it should have been a professional company that hopefully would check those kind of things. So a seller at that point then would have hopefully had an invoice from whoever it was, right? Correct. However, if it's just a little low on Freon, because they, they typically don't always do a pressure or leak test just to add a few pounds of Freon. So if they did have one done during that time and had not detected any leaks, no problem. Right. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Because I think what we're uh, kind of leaning to more towards, especially with our sellers, is to strongly encourage them to get the AC, especially the AC, to get it looked at or at least serviced so that they have that invoice. Mm -hmm. Because again, and, and I know you're going to cover because I love that in between time, you know, until the house sells. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, stuff can go one way or the other. And I think it just benefits the buyer if, if our seller has had the AC just recently inspected, it's, it's a selling factor, it's a positive, and so it's kind of like, why not? It's a great idea, and it's a nice... It's worth a hundred bucks, in my opinion. Yeah. It is, yeah. exactly, because the main, you just, that is the biggest source of conflict and issue all summer long. It's, you know, who should have fixed it, who, you know, mm -hmm. how can we, yeah, and... It's, in my opinion, it's an emergency situation. Um, we do, of course, give priority to yes, elderly and mm -hmm. kids and mm -hmm. sick. But anyone living in Arizona uh, in the summer with no AC really can't live in that house comfortably. I mean, I'd rather have AC than a working toilet. I can go find a toilet somewhere, right? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, you can live in your house. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> Enough said on that, right? <laughs> I, have, I have one comment in that. I uh, bought a model home from uh, a major builder, and, and it, uh, it turns out the con condenser or no, the coil uh, was bad. It, it had a warranty. I had the old Republic uh, home protection as well, but the warranty was only for the part, not the labor. So that negated old Republic doing anything about that unit because he said I had a warranty. Yes. Well, the air conditioning company I had out to do a minor tune-up on it told me your coil needs replacing, and our the part is warranted, but our labor is going to be two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. So I I, 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 I doubled back on the builder, and they said, "Well, we provided you with a home warranty, so that's your that's your recourse." I'm like, well, the home warranty isn't going to cover anything because they're telling me I have a warranty, which it's not a complete warranty. It's the manufacturing warranty for the part only. Mm -hmm. Will you at least cover the, the uh, labor, labor part of it? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the great no. news is we have changed that. Uh, new construction homes, because we have a whole uh, new construction Yeah, I was the first plan. owner of the home, so it was considered new, even though it was a model. Mm -hmm. uh, and the model homes get a lot of use. Doors opening and closing all the time. And yeah. Anyway, so. So home warranties, first of all, don't cover labor on manufacturer warrantied items. However, Old Republic will cover the labor on manufacturer warrantied items for new construction. When did that change? Um, just a few months ago. Okay, well. Be we well, we heard the feedback, <laughs> and that's I, I went to put a, a warranty on a home that we had we, we have, put all new appliances and everything in there, and then then I I uh, I called I think I called you and that was about a year ago, and then found out that. I'll hold it all everything i put in has a warranty on it i mean everything from ac to appliances to plumbing i put every we did so really there was and and i think what you shared with me is that well we we wouldn't want to cover that because it's under warranty and 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 then i i think what i found out later is that if if we go ahead with it and insist on it then what we're probably doing is voiding the manufacturer warranty by having, is that right? 
I don't know. It, you, we don't void the manufacturer warranty. You don't. You don't necessarily come out if it's under warranty because you require us to get the first person in line as a coverage of it. The we we would come out. Okay. But what we're going to say is it's under manufacturer warranty. Yeah. And uh, many times they will order the parts and get stuff for you, okay. but typically, or they'll do it on the as a separate job for you. Okay. But um, it, we wouldn't. Mm, it wouldn't void the manufacturer warranty. Okay. Right. But in that case where you have brand new everything, like you've just done a full yeah. rehab, as you said, with, I don't know. If, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a great application for the standard plan because it still covers all the other major mechanicals, plumbing, electrical, such as, uh, did you do a hot water heater as well? Mm -hmm. So everything, everything, even new electrical. Not completely, but Probably, I don't know, other than the garage door and a lot of the other okay. smaller pieces, you probably, I don't know, probably wouldn't need all that. I, have a, uh, I know you, you probably have a spiel you're going to get to. Are you, um, uh, like, I, I like the open discussion. It's perfect. Okay. answers the questions you want to hear. Right? I, have, um, I have a seller that, um, unfortunately, uh, we planned on selling her home under one circumstance, but life happened and now she's in, in a hospital, right? Oh, and so she's, uh, I told her the benefits of having a warranty because in her circumstance, she's a single, single older woman. And in lieu of having to make any, a lot of like any repairs or whatever, it just helps buyers feel more comfortable in general. Absolutely. Right. So, uh, Fill me in on the details, if you don't mind, again, on exactly because I really think it behooves her, especially because if they're going to if it will thwart asking for repairs up front, I think she should do whatever she can up front. You know what I mean? Um, share, if you don't mind. So t tell me the exact question. Well, tell me, <laughs> update me on your seller's coverage, seller's because coverage. I haven't I, I think I did one maybe one of these like maybe a year ago, maybe um, I haven't done a seller thing in a long time. Perfect. So for listings, so when you have a listing, we have what's called seller's coverage. And I'll go to this page here and I'm going to read the exact paragraph right out of this. Seller's coverage is available only in conjunction with the purchase of coverage for the home buyer. So basically, the seller is agreeing to pay for the buyer plan. Okay. Coverage becomes effective the day the application is received by us and continues until the expiration of the initial listing period, up to 180 days. We can extend that. Um, I should have my reading glasses on here. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it takes effect immediately. So she essentially has a home warranty as of right now when she orders it. So while she's gone, worst case scenario, something happens, she's covered still. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. And this is the one also where you... You can't, it does not come with AC and heat coverage, but you can add it for 60 bucks. They have that. Okay. Some people during this time where we don't use AC or heat up not to pay for it. Um, but I highly recommend it always in the summer, of course. We, we have a listing that uh, we, we listed it with coverage, uh, but we just changed it over. Uh, we were with one company and changed it over. To, to hear, we need to redo that. Uh, that was it just covering that particular listing, and now it has a new listing number, and it's kind of a different company, but it's still our buyer agent for the listing agent. So, if it's under you, you should be fine. Okay. Yeah. And you said 180 days it's covered. Yes, just automatically, and if you need to extend it, we can. Yes. So pre-existing conditions are not covered for the home seller. So what that means, basically, it's not intended to cure all of the items on your binzer. Yeah. However, there are some that could be covered. So if you have questions, you can always call me. We can kind of weed through it first before you call in, or you can just call in and ask the uh, service department as well. I was surprised to learn that Fireplaces, gas fireplaces, are uh, oftentimes covered by home warranty companies. Does, does your company 
covered them? Gas fireplaces. We cover the gas line, but, but the if actual... the mechanical part of the fireplace, like maybe the log broke off or something. So that's... I have uh, this home on uh, representing the buyer has two fireplaces and neither one of them work. Oh. So the home inspector found that out. But I, so I called around for a home warranty for my buyer. And because I want to try to protect my buyer's interest moving forward once he owns it, of course, we asked the seller to fix it. Um, that's neither here nor there. They're, they're, I just want to know after the fact, <coughs> do you, does your warranty cover the guts of the fireplace unit itself? The mechanicals, the, the mechanical, gas, not, right. the, not the display. Whatever it is. I mean, just like the hot like water. The pilot, like I don't know all of the intricacies of it, whatever it goes along yeah. with that, like a hot water heater, air conditioning, yeah. the major systems of a home mm -hmm. type deal. Correct. Yes. You do? Yes. Oh, okay. So gas lines. And we have extra coverage you can add. If you have an older home, um, well, let's just say a home... It doesn't matter the age. A lot of, a lot of our plumbing and gas lines and everything are run through the concrete in mm -hmm. Arizona. Um, we have, it's called enhanced slab leak and external pipe leak, which you can add on, which increases the coverage on that, mm -hmm. and it adds some coverage because home warranties only cover everything inside the walls, right? The living space, and your hot water heater in the garage, whatever. But. Um, the pipe that goes from the house to the street is partially covered with that, as well as your outdoor spigots and um, main shutoff valve out there. So that's a nice little thing. All right. So let me ask because then again, you know whether because we we know definitely the benefits from like a buyer perspective, but say like you know I want this listing, I I want you know so I'm going to my seller and. So I'm going to ask, you know, kind of some questions, uh, obviously, about the house. Is it possible, because hopefully at some point, you know, I mean, I'm hoping that they have a type of home warranty. But as part of my, say, like, um, questions or, uh, you know. Anything uh, sellers really need to know. Any seller, yeah, yeah, that they need to know. And, and I'll use the word for, the, like, that wow factor thing, <laughs> but, you know, just to, to kind of make me stand above, you know, a, a typical agent. Is there something that I can do with with my seller in order to help with that listing presentation from say like, you know, a, a warranty or things and talking about maybe, you know, like the AC and stuff? Um, well, the main thing is you put if you have listing coverage you put the sign writer out on your sign because okay. that is a really wonderful thing with i think it really gives people peace of mind knowing that the home is covered by a home warranty okay right probably dense but i didn't even think about the winter aspect yeah. yeah so i mean i i now i see how people can exploit that to try to get repairs and stuff because i you know I always looked at it from, well, if the seller's willing to offer a home warranty, there's a really good chance this house is in much better condition, <laughs> right? And so I always thought of it like that, um, but I never thought of it like milking on the binzer. So how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like what, what has been milked or whatever, what can we watch out for? What, you know, cause like, um, is it more proving when it went out type stuff or? How, how does that work? Um, it has to have. So the warranty starts. The item has to have been in good and working order once the plan is in place. Right. Yeah. So most any technician who's been out to a home can tell if something's been leaking for a long time. They can tell. I mean, it, you're you put your you put the seller's coverage on right now, and your water heater starts leaking tomorrow? Probably not. I mean, they can tell a lot of stuff. And if it did, the, it'll show that it it right it did. Right. We've had AC units go out the day after, legitimately. You know, I it does it. happen. Right. It does. That's yeah. Water yeah. Absolutely, and we're we're real good about that stuff. I, honestly, I'm not just saying that because I work for the company, but I've seen a lot of crazy stuff, so. and we're kind of here to help 
keep your deals together. And home warranties were invented by realtors, by the way. One of the things yeah. that you and I have done, and, uh, but I don't know that I shared it with you before, but oh, I love this. that um, we, we either give our buyer yes. with a home warranty if, uh, if it's not being provided. We ask for it from the owner because the last thing we want to do is feel guilty about anything. We want to be able to say, hey, where if I if I have a listing and we have a listing right now where the guy is OCD that's selling it and and everything that he could do he he does so we have this pile of paperwork of everything he's taking care of it. in addition to that we have a home warranty that we're offering with it and and we have it covered right now as well and uh, and I, I called him up uh, well we have permission to to offer it in the sale. But I called him up and I said, hey, listen, we went ahead and covered you during the listing period as well. Yeah. So that's good for the seller to know that, you know, especially whenever we know that they've done yeah. a good job. So that's a good marketing thing. Exactly. Is that we're, you know, listen, uh, with your with your listing, I'm going to cover you during our listing period. And if I have to pay $60 more at closing, that's, that, that's pretty good. And it's paid for when? At closing. at closing so the okay. total to the of, of course the contract overrides everything but the total the lowest total basic cost for your seller is 355 because what they're agreeing to pay for is the standard, standard plan and if they want AC it's 60 bucks so 415 if the contract says you know up to six hundred dollars obviously you have to let them increase the plan if they want or whatever but sometimes they don't and then the seller only is paying the 415 so it's a nice thing the other really cool thing about listing coverage which is a good um, sales point maybe for your your listing appointments yeah. is because with the listing coverage obviously it takes care of any thing that might wreck the deal or delay it or but when the buyer is getting a plan also through Old Republic, mm -hmm. it helps really reduce any of that, you know, issue of, oh, you knew about it, didn't disclose it, or all that kind of stuff. Because obviously if it was covered during the listing and now it's covered by, it's, so it, it kind of creates a continuous coverage from the same company. Can you upgrade the coverage too, or is it purely like a standard plan type thing? Nope, they have up to 60 days after closing to make any changes, upgrades, downgrades, additions, whatever they like. Well, because the other thing that I like is, like you have shared with me in the past, is that if, if something is brand new, you know, it, it has its already warranty, and but I have the ability, if I'm offering the uh, home warranty, that, and if my seller is going to pay for that, that I can give to my buyer, I can help them upgrade the plan to, if need be, you know, to include some other stuff. Exactly. And so I, I love having the freedom to do that again, you know, just to say I have your best interest at heart. It's not about me. Right. I love that. Good. Well said. Oh. <laughs> when it comes to uh, the market right now, um, you know, it's been a seller's market and stuff like that. So um, flips, flip, 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 flips. Uh, had had a couple, well, a mid-century modern flip in the mm -hmm. in the Biltmore area. Um, do you have any tidbits or hints on flips, especially from the mid-century modern period? <laughs> or as far as how to use the plan? How to? Yeah, because you know, oftentimes, um, maybe it didn't come with insight plumbing. May or may not. <laughs> they may or may. They may or may not be able to document all the repairs that have been made, completed, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? And a newer home, there's less question, but your older homes, you know, especially 50s, 60s, you know, 70s, they, there's a lot more questions involved. It's, especially if um, with some of the flippers that mm -hmm. maybe aren't even pulling permits for everything, right? Oh, yes. Exactly. <laughs> Doesn't Never happen. <laughs> um, boy, that's. Uh, Have you run into many issues with with not being able or with people like 
have you noticed a lot of shady work for example anything like that any any you know probably you know, the only tough situations i've been in as the home warranty person is screws through pipes which is pre-existing condition not something we fix I mean, usually it's screws through electrical oh <laughs> they, they live to tell about it uh, yeah i'm still here oh my <laughs> we, we that's had, scary uh, we, it was it was uh, we are so amazed that it actually had not caught fire oh, and oh, so wow. but uh we yeah, so anyway. Mm. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. but I, if, if you're aware that it's a flip going into it, I would um, beef up the inspection, make sure you get the major mechanicals inspected by the respective yeah. technician, licensed technician for that kind of stuff. Because it kind of makes you wonder if you should bring in, you know, your inspector has the basics that they're going to cover, but it makes you wonder you know, do you bring in like an electrician? You know, yes. do you bring in a plumber? Do you just to say, I, I need to know what condition well, this that's is the, in? That's the catch. You know, we, we tell people, you know, we always have their best interest at heart, but oftentimes trying to get a person to get a home inspection up front is mm -hmm. tough, much less going above and beyond yeah, that yeah. home inspection. That's, that's one of the toughest things, you know, and so. Can you ask the seller to pay for that? Or if they provide, you know, the permits, city plans, all the stuff they've done, so you can. Yeah. Can well, this is, uh, you know, it's hard not bringing in the specifics of each one of these. In this particular case, we found out in the process that the reputable contractor was not a reputable contractor. So my my seller had done what she thought was the right thing, but then come to find out this person was not good at all and a lot of stuff came out in the inspection and so yeah it wasn't it wasn't quite pretty good job sniffing that one out that's <laughs> i guess and to answer your question again with the or another answer um always make sure because I'll, I'll see a lot of times where the washer dryer isn't there mm -hmm. so they can't check that gas line or the valve um or the water uh spigot thing um <laughs> water heaters in those old houses the new water heaters are wider and taller mm -hmm. there was a federal yeah. mandate requiring yeah. more insulation so they don't fit in those new closets yeah and do, are flippers required to update that no 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 okay. but there are some new valves that are required okay. um, and especially from the top or how it the safety stuff yeah right and the, the venting sometimes they mm -hmm. vent them improperly too close to a window different crazy stuff like that which inspectors will catch most of that yeah but always make sure that washer, dryer, if it's there, if not, I don't know how you're going to test yeah. that. But yeah, you guys haven't had any slews of uh, repairs from flipped homes needing, needed per se from people trying to trying to get by. They wouldn't get repaired. A yeah. lot of it, depending on what it is, some will yeah. get repaired. But if it's improper installation, it's not covered. Yeah. Now, what the if the failure is due to improper I guess my, my proper question, I guess what I'm getting at is from where you're sitting, have you noticed an influx of shoddy workmanship since flips have taken over? No, because I don't, I'm not really that okay. far into it to know okay. what or why okay. the failure happened. Okay. I'd be interested to know if that's gone up a, a bit in the last couple of years with the amount um, of flips going on. But what I would know is because if they call, let's say it was a flip issue and it was improperly installed or something, and we didn't denied it, I would right away get a call from the realtor. Okay. Saying why is this denied and and, but I haven't had more of those either. So. Okay, well, that's good news. That means. Maybe the work is pretty good out there. Hopefully. <laughs> well, let let me ask Austin and Ann because uh, my question has to do with some of the um, new. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to use the word open door. Other type listers or sellers or whatever it is, because part of it is them wanting to kind of stick within in home, you know, all of your people. And um, I had a concern because they they really didn't fuss about. I asked for the seller to pay for it, and they were willing to do it. Um, but I had to push to, and I asked for Old Republic, that it be taken care of. 
And then, um, but my question is, again, talking about the repairs, is they didn't necessarily provide like names and contact people of who had done the repairs. And then I had issues as to exactly what did you follow through with the home warranty because it seemed like they were kind of reluctant to give me that information. Of and their so, contractors. Yeah. And then also as to did my client get her warranty? What can I do to protect my, my, my client? Well, you can write in the home warranty you want on the contract. And which I did, but it's so like they have I, to honor that. Okay. Um, as far as their contractors, uh, I don't know. I don't believe they have to disclose that to you. Is that what you're asking? If well, I guess I because I felt when she moved in, there was a, a concern with some electrical stuff, and so I said, "Well, you know, talk to the people who did the repair work." And she said she couldn't, she didn't, she wasn't given who. Oh, and I right. said, well, you've got your home warranty, so let's find out, you know, maybe if, if that covers it. And they were very reluctant to give her information about her home warranty. Old Republic was? No, no the, the, uh, the open oh, door. Uh, and so Republic it made me wonder if, you know, had they followed through with it. And so my question is, what do I, as the agent, need to do to make sure that I, that my client is? I always forward the confirmation email. When you guys send it out that the, it's been ordered, I forward that to the buyer's agent. Perfect. Yes. But they, it's but they, the stuff that you're talking about is before it ever goes it's to them. It's separate. She has nothing to do with that. It's up to you to protect the, okay. the buyer or the seller. Yeah, uh, if you know that there's been paint work done, flooring done before it closes, if that's a concern get that information once yeah. it closes right. then, it's good luck unfortunately like you, the rightful time is the inspection period unfortunately yeah. you know that 10 days is that 10 days anything and everything that you possibly want try to get it done and if you because if we don't yeah. do our jobs as a realtor let's say uh, we we have the buyer we have, we want these things repaired if if we don't protect our buyer then there's an open door to come after us because well, do, it was our okay. job to protect them. So I needed to make sure, I, I, like, well, that she actually got the warranty. Well, and what, I thought what you the were talking was. about stuff that was quite well, 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 The uh, price point, uh, the price, it'll be on the settlement statement that yeah. the home warranty was ordered. And, 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 it, and it was, but she had never gotten any confirmation, confirmation or anything like that. The policy so, takes about 10 to 14 business days after closing okay. to arrive in the mail. Because oh. we have to wait for the check to come from title, process it, send it up. So, um, in the meantime, this is exactly the policy. It's they get this in the mail in a black and white with what they ordered on the back sheet. And a lot of times, whenever we have somebody that has a, a potential claim within the first week or two, and yeah. you know, we just I just call Old Republic and they'll they'll say, yeah, we have the order here, and uh, can you give me a contact person for escrow to verify that the payment's coming out? And then they'll verify it. And yeah. that's happened a couple of times over the years. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I, there was is. one step I needed to have done. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Right. And that's a really cool thing about Old Republic, too. We don't have the 30 day wait after close, which is really nice. They do, however, and part in part, I believe it's due to the flippers way back in 08 ish back then. Um, they will ask, you go to a department called what's, uh, Early Life, and they will ask a lot, a lot, a lot of questions to make sure it's not a pre-existing condition, and then go from there. So it's just like health insurance, right? You can't break your leg and then go get health insurance and get it fixed. Same concept. So it has to be in good and working order after the plan's in place, and then if it breaks, then it's good. So we also have... Um, the undetectable pre-existing conditions. So there's gonna be times where there's a leak in the wall that your inspector didn't find, nobody knew about it, maybe not even the seller knew about it, and all of a sudden you notice water coming out from under your baseboard, we will still repair that. Because that's 
we don't expect you to go rip all the walls open and make sure there's no leaks. So we know there are some things that are undetectable for you um, and are pre-existing, but we'll still fix those. <laughs> yeah. One, okay. One thing uh, about selling your home right now with the seller's market where it's at, uh, there aren't many repairs that have had to be made by sellers. And so, uh, like for, for my clients and stuff, you know, by uh, them offering the home warranty, it's been hugely beneficial. So that's the main tip that I could say as far as a seller that would save you a lot of money. Essentially, it, no matter what, in general, you probably have a beautiful home and stuff. No matter what, it probably won't have many issues. But. I'm upgrading my bathroom. Some of the carpeting and tiles. There you go. He's another good guy, too, to, yeah, uh, talk about re rehabs and flipping and stuff like that. He's uh, good information, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah because I'm having trouble with my contractor. Uh, yeah, Dad's, Dad manages the property management stuff that we do. And he, he's, yeah, so okay. also, yeah. But cost of benefit value, like, uh, I'm sure you, you're, uh, there's, I don't wanna step on anything, but as far as uh, any repairs, I this is a crazy market. So in your, in your honest opinion, have you seen that your sellers have had to do many huge upgrades to get top dollar? You know, certain things are mandatory, just minimum, like if it's truly dated, it's worth it just to get it to the basic par. But I mean, for a lot of the listings, well, one I sold on the water uh, in Peoria Lake community it was a dated home, but great location and, you know, on the water, you know, and it, most people it was lived in. I mean, it was livable. You know, you could get in there. It was clean and good bones and all that. But, it, you know, I, I made an adjustment on uh, on the sale price, but it, you know, so dropped dollar. Yeah. You know, and, and there were people who walked in and, well, the kitchen's outdated and the bathroom's outdated yep. and stuff like that. But, you know, they knew the price was right, so it sold with no problems. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people go to the University of Nelson Garden. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they watch yeah. the TV program you know. and they think they know it all. Uh, oh, I hear yeah. you. They just walk in and you go, oh, this is dated. This is dated. Right. What are you, you know. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. So yeah, after the they bathroom. lose a couple of opportunities to buy, absolutely they, they start. You know, they start really learning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what about my, my other listing? Yeah. That's the funny part is that like, her kitchen and her bathrooms are are gorgeous. Like she's she's done them up beautifully. <clears throat> but we when she asked about should I replace the carpet? Or something? It's like well, right now with where your home's at, mm -hmm. you're not going to get any extra. You'll literally spend dollar for dollar. You know, it's not going to get you any more money. And I would say don't because she did have. So if you are doing the, the bathrooms, I would agree. I'm sure you would agree too. Like bathrooms and kitchen definitely are where you'd want to spend the money. But I had one person ask about it. Like should, uh, question, oh, a covered patio. They had a filled in patio. And that was a tough one. It's like, honestly, I would get rid of the enclosed patio if it were me. Oh, the lanai or the, yeah, whatever like they call it. Yeah, that little here, Arizona, room Arizona lanai room thing. Back. Yes. You know, it's like, well, what should we do about that? Because it had the old green, uh, you know, the old patio mm -hmm. flooring that was like the short grassy Indoor stuff, album. you know, oh, yeah, yeah, it had that stuff in it. And it was, it was, yeah, that was one of the few I was like, you might actually want to get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even stop to think about. I don't think this person had coverage, uh, had a policy, but say, uh, Ricky, like if it's a lockout, somebody loses their key or something like that, how, under what circumstances are you eligible for a rekey? Uh, we have an add on, it's called the Star Service. Right. It covers, um, it's not necessarily for a lockout, but it's to change up to six locks for the new buyer coming in. Oh, for the new buyer coming yes. in. Yes. Yes. And that's a, and it also in that same 50, it's $50 to add that on. Mm -hmm. It also covers the sprinkler system. So the timer, you know, the valves, sprinkler heads, really? not the shovel or the ax pick that goes <laughs> through the pipe. Not re-piping, <laughs> re but repairing. Like the timer and the valve yeah. or 
Wow. And even heads, if yeah. if they Seriously. are if they go bad, not because you ran over them with the lawnmower. And... I've never done that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure you haven't. Um, <laughs> That's cool. I didn't know that. Yes, so and two tune-ups on the AC unit. Really? Yes. So for the so we have a new buyer. They go in, and we can say, listen, if they say they have a concern about who has lock keys for the locks. Oh, okay. With this service, if they have this service. And we, let's just take care of it. We'll call them. And you call into the service department, just like you're making a claim. Mm -hmm. And it's still the $75 trade call fee for all the items in there. Um, so for 75 bucks, they can get all their locks. Not all, it's up to six. And I'll tell you what the difference of price is. Yeah. Four locks, $260. Two fees. Whoa! Ooh, that's that's what, and we just did that last week. You wow. just did it. Four locks, two hundred and sixty bucks. Uh, two on the two on the security door, two on the main door. That's four right off the bat, and it, and it, and that's the cheapest that we could find because most of them will go by how many how many tumblers, mm -hmm. and with your with your uh, deadbolts you can have several. Right. And, uh, so two hundred and. 40 or so, and it was just to get in the door. Wow. The two screen door and the main door. And so that's a, that's like a smoking deal. This, this would be good yeah. for buyers and sellers that, you know, if, if you put it on for the seller, star service, I guess, I don't work for them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see how it could be used as a, a way to, uh, uh, to, to, to come across with with very clear intentions, I want to protect you, and, and and I, you know, I don't know about most of the realtors, but we usually buy buy. We usually give a gift, uh, you know, a Home Depot or Lowe's or nice. something like that, or in in some cases, if if we think everything is pretty well okay, we'll just make this their gift if, if it's not included. But for fifty bucks, hey, listen, when you move in, I'll take care of getting a locksmith out here for you. And we'll just change out your locks. Hmm? Nice. Yeah. Well, let me the clarify. The value on the surface sheet. It's $50 to add it. But still $75 trade coffee. Yeah. All right. Bill, what is your thought? And maybe this What's is that? kind of a, a redundant or silly question. But, um, you know, we've had a couple situations up at Black Canyon City because it's an older community um, where, uh, a, a, a client, you know, has passed away and the family has inherited the property. And so they have no idea, you know, what has transpired or, or whatever. Um, and, and hopefully, I, I guess our client did have a home warranty, you know, less on the house there. But the family ended up being stuck with some, this is the first time with some pretty major repairs. Ooh. And I think because um, the age of the home and and stuff, but what's your thought as far as maybe how to protect the family? Well, if the, if the home warranty is already in place. I guess they would have to find out. The family can. Their, yes. well, but yeah. you're, it's a listing and mm -hmm. the home warranty doesn't go into place until you get it listed. But it doesn't take care of pre-existing. Uh, no. So you're no. talking about yeah. their inheritance. The owners should have been unknown, one. and there's nothing that a, a home warranty company can do about that. Oh, that's true. That's true. So are AC units the hands down the most popular call, or is it like micro microwaves? What is the most? What are your most? Oh, AC units! I swear, every summer we repair every single AC unit in the entire okay. valley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think they're multiplying. There's no AC units, um, and that's why I. And pretty much I present at PAR and, and lots of places. And I always try and make sure people are aware that the home inspector doesn't inspect that, that unit. So, yes, it can pass splits, but it can still have a big old leak in that coil. Yeah. So um, that's my biggest worry. And that's where we get the most stressed out agents all summer long. How often should a person have a home inspection? You know, like, let's say I own a home right now and I wanted to get a home warranty on it. Uh, would you then require me to get a home inspection or do you guys just... We don't require it. Um, okay. Many, many home warranty companies do require um, 
that you submit uh, inspection with the request for a warranty. You don't do that. Um, but in that star service where the rekey thing is, they get two tune-ups a year as well. So it's a $75 trade call fee. They'll go out and do everything you get in a tune-up. Um, you could request to have a pressure leak test done that. It, it uh, would be a little bit extra charge on that, I think. Okay. But um, if, and actually, if there is a leak, let's say they, I don't, I don't know the exact amount of pounds, but there's a certain <coughs> number of pounds. If they have to recharge, I'm just going to say a random number. <laughs> let's say it's six pounds that they had to add. They're going to go. Okay, there's probably a leak, and then they'll do a pressure test on that. Okay. So, okay. yeah. Um, so we have the coverage been in existence four months. We get a service checkup. Okay. Uh, they find something wrong that typically would be covered. So as they find something wrong, would they then go ahead and make arrangements for the repair? Yes. Yes. And um, the tune-ups, there's one in the fall and one in the spring, and there's a window, a three-month window for each time. So if they missed this fall, they would get it in the spring. So within their 12 months, they're going to be able to do two. So, good questions. Jet Any? tubs. Jet tubs. Jet, yep, you know, for yep. master baths generally. Mm -hmm. You cover those. Yes. Okay. The motor. Motor. But um, not the tub itself or any of the, you know, those things in there. Mm -hmm. So. And so that includes access? No, you have to have access. Yeah. If it was installed properly, it would have access. If not, you can cut your own hole and we'll come back. <laughs> That, that's a that's an issue. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of endeavor. They, yeah. built, they built it in. They installed it while it was being built, and and I've had a couple yeah, of them where we've had to cut holes. You have to figure out where it's at first, oh. you know, and we have to either cut a hole in the bathroom where and try to figure out how to make it look decent, or you have to go outside and go through the wall. It's crazy. And I've seen where they don't actually connect the overflow back to the drain. Oh. How's that for fun water issue? I got a silly question. Either somebody might know. I've never had to deal with it before. Um, on on the ovens, because I know we've replaced microwaves in homes and stuff. Um, on an oven, I'm not sure if it's a defective door. Is that something that's worth a call, or is that something that it's I should contemplate? An oven. Possibly, yeah, it's like if it's the, due the to normal wear, apart. well, if it's normal wear and tear, like the hinge just kind of fell apart, maybe or whatever. Yeah. Versus if someone got rough with it or fell on it, or it's got to be normal wear and tear. If you stepped on it like a step stool to get in the yeah. cabinet above and broke it, that's no. not. Yeah. It's just yeah, I don't know. Like it's so random. It's the bane of my existence. You just randomly, and all of a sudden, the thing will come off, and it, it's just. It, it falls into like three pieces, and I've never your had your personal a, house. Yeah, I'll, I'll. and I've I've never I, I'm one of those that I always try to simplify stuff and not call, you know. But that at this point it's been so many times, and it it functions fine. So, yeah. Yeah. so the microwave is typically covered, uh -huh. but uh, and a, a stove, refrigerator, those are separate components. What if it's a built-in oven? Do we have to have a separate coverage on that? Nope. All of the built-in appliances, even trash compactors, garbage disposals, okay. the hood fan. So the, the built-in, uh, let's say, convection oven and microwave, the, the units that cost like two, three thousand dollars yes. over covered. Yes. Absolutely. Seller coverage pool. Sorry. Seller no pool. Seller's coverage. Good question. You cannot add anything to seller's coverage. So no pools, no pool. none yeah. of this add-on stuff, just the AC unit. So um, they can add it after closing, of course, About for the uh, buyer plan. Manufacturers' homes. Yes. Yep. We covered those. They're at a lesser price, too. They're the same price as a condo townhouse. Okay. So I don't know if you noticed that. There's a price for single family dwellings or 
um, townhouse condo. Second year. The, I'm assuming, from what I understand, that the, the continue the coverage with the new owner, it, that's going to be a different price. The, from seller's coverage to well, for, for the second year to continue if they want to continue coverage warranty coverage so the listing has a plan on it already that you want to transfer to the buyer well it's they have coverage the new buyer has had coverage for a year okay they want to renew mm -hmm. uh and it's you know they know how much that that was paid for to begin with second year can they can expect the price to go up correct so it's an insurance policy so just like all insurance what, what it goes up a little bit price? increases is it it's occurring right now i don't know those exact numbers it's it kind of depends on which plan you have which add-ons what each each piece gets a little bit of a bump yeah. for agents though you can call me and ask for first year rates okay. and if we if we can there's some parameters you have to fall within still um because agents do get dropped as well which hurts mm -hmm. but i can sometimes get that overturned as well but um and then do do the owners have options for payment plans? Uh, second the second year. year? Mm -hmm. Yes. And we do have two-year plans available as well. We do. So if you negotiate um, like the rock stars you are for your buyers, and let's say you get a thousand bucks for home warranty, you actually go to a you can put that to a two-year plan and oh, nice. yeah. I didn't know that. And they can pay the difference. And I know there's been some questions. Um, some some agents sometimes forget to order their plan and maybe we'll do it the day of closing but the cd's already done and they had let's say they had 500 dollars to use for a home warranty but they also wanted to include the washer dryer fridge yeah. so the the platinum plan's 500 washer dryer fridge is an additional 110 so what they're doing is writing a personal check at closing to put in the envelope that title sends to old Republic so that it doesn't mess up the CD. And that seems to be just working fabulous. Cool. And some people are like, oh, I don't want to leave money on the table. Cause let's say you negotiated 700 bucks and they want the platinum plan for 500 and there's 200 left. So they'll order whatever they can to eat up the rest of the 200. And sometimes it goes over by five bucks. So instead of leaving the 200, they go over, mm. pay the extra five. Can they can they do the two year plan right off the bat? Yes. At sales? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. You sure can. Uh, silly question. Um, Cause I know you guys max out at four plexes, what? right? Four plex is our okay. top. Yep. yep. Okay. Which can be 3000 square feet, right? Yeah. Per unit? Well, total. Total, or, okay. You know, you're dealing, sure, four kitchens eight bathrooms, whatever it might be, but you can deal with 5,000 square foot homes that have the same thing. <laughs> how does, how, what's the difference between a huge home, for example, and that? Well, the fourplex, first of all, that price you see for, let's do the ultimate. Yeah. 1,135 bucks. That's for all four units. It's not per unit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, the fourplex is a great deal, but I'm wondering like why I'm more going the opposite direction because I do mainly do investors now with apartment complexes and things. Not necessarily, I'm not asking 150 units, but six six units. You know, right. they're right at the cutoff. And when I see this for homes 5,000 square feet or over, and it's like, well, our sixplex isn't even 5,000 square feet. <laughs> you know, so it's like, how did they? You know, where did they draw the line? I guess. Um, the the difference is probably more because each of the fourplex has its own kitchen bathroom everything 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 yeah. five thousand let's say it's an eight thousand square foot house it's going to have a lot of extra stuff too maybe four bathrooms maybe for everything the price you're talking about price difference well price and coverage you know why would you why would they cover a five thousand but not a six unit small one too. Oh, you're oh, talking square footage. Both, so if the six both, unit you know, is seven thousand square apples. feet, right? And right. if they both have five, six bathrooms, you know, I'll yeah. You know. I believe it has to do with it. It starts leaning towards more commercial. Gotcha. Sometimes they have the commercial AC units, or gotcha. that's a good question. I don't know yeah. for sure, but I think it's because it's classified yeah. more. Commercial. What's the biggest house you've seen covered? Uh, we cap at ten thousand. Okay. So that's uh, that's one. 
I just did a really fun one though, which it's case by case, but this, the garage was 4,000 square feet. The house was 2,800, but the garage had an office and was air conditioned. So that was a tough one. We got it covered, but it was, um, it's challenging because we cover guest houses. Because it's like that cool home we had in Mesa. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like the home in Mesa. It does. Oh, yeah, I, I went to that, that one. Yeah. So, yeah. any skepticism, any things you want me to address where you just think, oh, home warranties are a scam? Uh, I just share one thing with uh, because in property management, I deal with all of the companies um, because people have already purchased stuff, you know, by the time I, I see it. And, and the biggest difference that I see and that some people get into the wrong kind of warranty. There's, there's a, a warranty company that's coming back and they, they come back about every three or four years after they've been booted out of Arizona. And they have their own staff that does everything. And they are terrible. They, they, they get shut down, they come back under new names and, and they'll say, we, we do all of our in-house, it's all in-house. We handle it ourselves. And, and it sounds so good to the people who are wanting to buy it or who are wanting coverage. And they're enough under price that it makes it attractive also. But it's the worst situation. And we had it our, ourselves uh, uh, maybe eight or nine years ago. And then every single person that buys that regrets it. And, uh, and then and I'll intervene as a handy person uh, going in to try to fix something. No, you know, it's their own staff and they, they send these people out that are very, they're not licensed because they're, they're staffed in-house. And so they come under different regulations and the difference between uh, that kind of company and, and Old Republic. And, and I check because I wanted to go in, you can go in and, and all you hire on are licensed people. The, and the reason being is that it, it, it puts a liability on them, uh, which is good. You know, and they're qualified, they're licensed, and everything. But there is a, if you see the companies out there that do all of the servicing in-house, I'll just share with you that it's it's time to run. And uh, it really is. Thank you for that. that. That's very wise, too. And very well said, because we... Well, I know you can't say it. I, I I, <laughs> right, and I am, I'm glad you didn't say any names as well, because no. I don't want to bash any companies. Well, no, well, <laughs> but we've been in business for we're, our 45th birthday is coming up, oh. right? And businesses stay in business for that long because they're good. And we also are governed by the insurance industry. And the reason some of these companies is dis disappear is they find little loopholes mm -hmm. around. Because we put a certain percentage of all of the premiums we bring in goes into a... Um, basically an escrow account, a separate account in case something goes bad and we have, so it keeps us very solvent, very, very able to cover claims. And, um, you know, it's part of the reason we've lasted so long is we follow the rules. We do a good job. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so Mary, I just noticed that, uh, you know, like for the ultimate and the platinum and it says under ultimate protection because you've got code upgrades as well as improper installation. And so when Josh was talking earlier, you know, about some of the flips, what exactly, what, what is that? That's if, well, if it's improperly installed. Right. We, right. we can correct that. But if the failure is due solely and only because it was put in backwards or whatever improper installation, then we have to draw the line. Yeah. Okay. Did you cover the part about the new water heaters? Is oh, with the new... Where you have to have more space now? Does, yes. Do you, do you do retrofitting on that? We, um, with the platinum plan, uh, that's a great question. So with the platinum plan, it comes with an extra $1,000 okay. that the homeowner can use towards modifications needed on covered items. Oh. So in situations like that, um, Another one we have is where a new AC unit doesn't fit on the concrete pad, so you have to add that, or it doesn't fit on the old stand, or the water heater doesn't fit. So 
they will do um, modifications for things like that. And sometimes even um, a lot of people are switching to those tankless in the water heater situations where they're not fitting in the closet anymore. They'll just plop it outside the house. Do we have the option if, 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 we're, if our water heater is going out, can, can we have the option of applying whatever the replacement might be and having them tankless go in? Yes. You can do that? We, it's called a cash out. Um, and keep in mind, we are not retail. We have wholesale prices on all of our labor and um, equipment. So it's not going to cover 100% of what you're trying to do. But if you want it, let's say um, your water heater goes out and we're going to replace it. And with labor parts, all the stuff we need to do the replacement, you can ask for the cash out. We'll tell you the dollar amount so you can make the choice if it's worth it to you or not. And then apply that to whatever you want. People use that on refrigerators. Let's say they, because we just do builder grade replacement. So let's say they want to upgrade to whatever the latest, greatest fridge is, they'll just take that money and apply it to a different color or style, whatever they want. Are you noticing any, um, or is there, has there been any discussion about any home build, build changes that will uh, kind of, how should I say, um, want to change some of the traditional things that are approaches to your policies? Say, for instance, uh, artificial intelligence coming into homes and certain types of things that how homes are built differently or being Smart built homes. on Smart the horizon, homes, yeah. you know, that you can share with us that your your guys in the Ivy Tower are looking at it. Right. Do you, do you adapt to Alexa? <laughs> you know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You that's know, a great question. The future <laughs> homes today and that sort of thing and how is your company responding to that? They are talking about it. The That's as much as I know. I don't know if it's anywhere in the near future or I know it's not on our next updated brochure, which comes out in February, but um, I don't know. Like you're talking about maybe like electronics or home or because I mean, yeah. I and homes are pretty amazing what they have already. Yeah. Or, have, you know, like maybe for automatic uh, shades and oh, skylights all of it, and you know. all of that. Yeah. So you know, whenever uh -huh. you get to those kinds of things that are motorized. Is that outside your? I think it starts getting outside of our scope of, we're more of a major mechanicals, electrical plumbing. For the smart homes, right. I would, I, if it were my home, I would make sure the installer of my smart home equipment gave me a pretty nice warranty on it. And they had to come back and do the labor. Because otherwise it starts, you know, it's like um, yeah. auto yeah, right. repair place starting to work on boats. If they could. I don't, maybe there's a home warning company out there that has more of a niche. There might be. These types of homes. You know, there is a know. new one that came out that uh, they're they're trying to take themselves apart from home warranty companies. They're calling themselves, um, what are they calling? I can't think of their little catchphrase thing. But they're trying to differentiate themselves. But yeah. They do offer some different stuff, um, but they're brand new, and I don't know. I don't yeah. know much about them yet. So oh, because it, it, we're doing yeah, our I research. Mean, there's a lot of additions, so I'm sure you guys, you know, with your uh, actuarial people and whatnot, they could probably take it up as far given the right information. But that's not your average person, I guess. Right, you know, and we're trying. Right. Our main focus is you guys. We want to make sure that deal stays together. That you know, it's not the end all be all catch all fix everything. It's just not. It's a major What's the most souped up one you've ever seen. A plan? Yeah. Um, pretty much the works, except for maybe the septic. Um, some of the bigger houses have all the fountains and they have all the, you know, everything. And I wouldn't, you know, we have the limited leak roof leak repair as well. If you have a hundred bucks left to spend. I would maybe look at some other stuff. It's it. We'll cover it. Well, it's it's patch work, right? And by the time, let's be real. By the time 
you see that water coming through your sheetrock? It's been there a while. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be a pre-existing condition because, but it could be undetectable. So it will probably still patch it, but just keep that in mind. Most roof issues, most roof leak situations are from weather, from a tree branch, from wind. Would it cover, um, like, uh, the, the most common thing that I see is as a result of wind damage, but it's nothing necessarily really big. It might be, uh, would this coverage take care of repositioning, uh, putting back up a few piles that are blown down from a ledge from an overhang? No, that's homeowner's insurance because it's due to weather related natural causes. So this is just normal wear and tear. Um, normal wear and tear? Just aging. Just aging. Yeah. yeah. So okay. that's my insider tip on that makes sense a bit. what you could skip as far as spending your money on something how else. Much, how much does uh, the use of the plan weigh into the renewal pricing? So the first year they've had a few claims, is that going to directly impact that renewal price? No, nope, it's standard. Okay. However, it can affect if you're renewed or not. So, and I don't know all of the actuarial pieces. There's like five things that go into it, like how many different trades came out, dollar amount, frequency. It, there's a... It's pretty hard to get canceled, <laughs> but I, it I happens. One client that was canceled, um, and the way that they worked it was he he is a fighter, and a lot of it has to do, I think, with that so, as, as well. Just so, <laughs> uh, but he he every time something happened, he called him out. Rather, and and it got to the place where I listened to a phone call because he recorded it. And and, it, and he wasn't taking care of stuff. And so as a result, some of these things would fail. And he called out, I think, probably every discipline. And uh, then he had this attitude on top of it. But they said, we won't renew it uh, right now. But if you will do, if you will do a, a uh, have an inspection done, uh, we will reconsider it. Yes. And that's the way they handled it. So it wasn't like no never it was like they still left the door open if he would take care of some stuff and, and provide some update the condition of the property but i would guarantee that they they probably spent fifteen thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars in a year on miscellaneous stuff yeah and and that's partly that's too what, what i'm here for too if you have those gray areas or those struggles where maybe you know maybe it should be covered or you want mm -hmm. call me and i can, I can sometimes help with those in one way or another so okay. do you have any specific questions about anything right how about solar do you do anything with the solar panels if they own it not any longer we did um which i'm bummed i have a solar hot water heater on my house <laughs> my own hot water heater is not covered <laughs> but um no and we only go up to what 50 gallon tanks because then it becomes commercial oh i do i have the rolling shutters on the outside of my house if that with the with the push button yeah all right if that malfunctions do you cover that yeah that's that's the ins installers would have to do that unless something went wrong with the electrical on the inside of the home mm -hmm. because we only cover within the inside. walls yeah uh, Except the hot water heater if it's in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so and if like, you do a fridge add-on and it's in the garage, we'll still cover that. But the living space is... So if we, if we have two, two refrigerators, like most... Uh... Oh, you know what? So mm -hmm. you have to buy the first coverage for 50 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if you get it with the washer-dryer fridge, it's there's a little bit of a discount. And then there's the fridge add-on. Yes. Mm -hmm. For wine fridges, forty dollars to add them on. It covers up to four more fridges. So if you have a fridge in your garage and a wine fridge, so now you have three fridges total. 
It's the 50 plus the 40. Since we're rednecks, we have one inside. We have two outside on our porch. <laughs> <laughs> Along with your old uh, washing machine thing, the rollers. Have you been there, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mom had one of those when I was a kid. <laughs> that is funny. Yes. And one last right. thing. Don't forget to sign up for your toolbox account. You only sign up for it once, right? It's free. Um, but you can get marketing materials in there that you can put your own face on. So if you wanted to do um, calendars or just listed, anything to get the word out to the flyer, your neighbors. Is there still time on the customizable calendars? There is. All right. There is. Um, you, print, you print your own, but we just have the template set up where you just stick your stuff on there. Um, the nice thing too, because I know realtors do a lot of their paperwork at night, right? So you can also order your plans in here if you want. Um, and then it keeps a record of, you know, their anniversary. You can get anniversary reminders when your buyers have now been in their house for a year. So it's another reason to reach out and touch them, say, congrats on one year, you know, you're ready to move again. <laughs> I like how you have the template, you know, that's there and then you just, you know, if I uh, take that this and this and that thing, it's just, the email is real easy to send out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's nice. Oh, awesome. delete, yes. Yeah. And notepads, we've got all kinds of little trinkets, eyeglass cleaners, screen cleaners, whatever. I'll yeah. leave some of that stuff behind. I, I talked to you yesterday about, I think it was yesterday, about getting a whole bunch of properties in that had expired. Uh, yes. And were you saying that it, as long as it's within 30 days that it can be reinstated, generally speaking? Yes. Within 30 it, days. It will be considered a renewal, renewal still, so it will still have the price increase. Okay. And there's a little bit of risk depending on where you're at. If, if they're renewing it because there's a current issue, you might get a little pushback, but um, if not, then it's not a problem. If we get pushback, we call you. Yeah. Okay. Are you finding some areas like I, I had just had somebody uh, talking about Santan Valley that there's issues with the water oh, and wow. that homeowners are having problems. Um, there's, I don't know if it's a, a well situation, but like, quality water or yeah, the, the quality of water, of water the Eat. amount of water, and it's like, I I haven't heard anything, and it's like, oh, go to the East Valley. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've not heard anything about that, no. Okay. Crazy. Crazy. But they said that's why, you know, Santan, because when we're looking at uh, why you, you get a, you know, a lot of house for the, the amount of money, that's why. Wow. And it's like, I, so I didn't know if anybody was good. Other day, we were talking number. about rolling oh, yeah. lettuce. Where can I reach you? <laughs> yes. And I had a bad idea. Feel free to call me at 602 788 4458. Or my email, Mary P at ORHP. The following day, I know. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. It was delayed.